you ever used someone else's YouTube tagline in a video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Like, comment, share, all that good stuff, guys. It helps me out a lot. Much appreciated. Now, the guys over at Pro Airsoft Supplies contacted me recently, and they said, hey, we've got these new SRU uh, kits for airsoft guns in. Would you like to take a look at one? And they had the option. They had the ScarL, the GHK G5, or their AK kit. Now, I'd seen the AK kit before. So I said the AK kit. Now, you guys know I generally take a, a look at very practical gear, stuff like that. But it can get a little boring. I need to vary things up now and again, just because some, sometimes things get a bit stale for me, just talking about the same stuff, talking about Cordura and Nyko over and over again. Also, I want to have a bit more variety in the channel. I enjoy playing Airsoft. If you are just playing Airsoft as a game, as just a sport, as it, you know, that, that sort of thing. Guns like this are good fun. Uh, SRU are pretty innovative in the market. They're fairly unique in what they do. They are the first company within the world of airsoft I know of to really get into 3D printing. And it makes a lot of sense for them to do it because it's very uh, applicable, relevant kind of technology for the game we play. So yeah, what we got here is the... Uh, WE AK built into the SRU 3D printed kit for WE and GHK AKs. Now I said yes to Pro Airsoft Supplies because uh, I've shopped with them before. They have a great reputation for customer service and they're the sort of company that I want to be mentioning here on the channel. So we're going to focus on the kit rather than the rifle, the gas blue like rifle inside it because it's a WE AK. It's got the short stroke kit inside it. But other than that, it is stock. And if you want to see a review of that gun, you can go elsewhere. So we'll start at the front and we'll work our way around and we'll talk about some of the features of this rather unique looking airsoft replica. Now, as I say, first off, it is 3D printed. I'm going to roll in some B footage of some close-ups on the kit itself. And you, you can see you can see all the lines and the way it's built. And it's actually kind of a cool look on the surface. It's quite different to any injection molded plastic that's used in most other uh, products out there you can see where the layers are built up it's pretty interesting stuff now obviously one of the first things i wanted to know was is it actually solid is it going to stand up to knocks etc and uh, to my surprise i have to say yeah it's actually pretty tough it's surprisingly well built if you look at this bridge between the pistol grip and the body of the kit for example this would probably be a weak point, but they have, like, it's not hollow. It's printed solid. Um, there's a little bit of flex in the kit, but that's what you want. It brittle, solid plastics, when they smash into things, will just snap. There is a slight bit of flex in the plastic, which is going to allow it to just absorb impact forces a bit better. So it's genuinely quite robust. Now, obviously, I'm just borrowing this. I'm not keeping the gun. I'm not being paid by Pro Airsoft. They, I'm literally just borrowing this to put on a video because I thought it was ridiculous and totally non-practical and different to what I usually do. I can't comment really long-term on the robustness, the uh, resilience of the build. But from what I can see, it's pretty tough. Now, first thing, the fit of the AK within the kit, there is very little wobble. There is a, a tiny, maybe, a millimeter or less back and forth movement of the gun within the kit itself but that is it it's very very easy to fit you pretty much just uh, there's one allen headed bolt in here remove that the rear end comes off the kit the ak pretty much just pops in obviously you do need to remove the stock remove the pistol grip there's a little bit of work involved in fitting it but honestly basic tools uh, really really simple stuff to do it the handguard up here, you've obviously got three, six, and nine. They're surprisingly quite close to a real pick rail. I've got uh, just an airsoft replica, Knight's Armament foregrip on here, and an Inforce light, a real one. Both fit on just fine. I've tried a few accessories. They go onto that rail pretty well. You maintain the AK's sling point just here. There's a space back here to loop a sling through. How well that works, uh, that I've not tested, I must admit. But there are some options for slings with this gun. Um, although they are a bit limited. But at the end of the day, 
you gotta remember guys, this is not for practicality. This is for just looks and being unique, basically. So as I say, we've got that sling point. Now the trigger, obviously you've got a 3D printed plastic trigger just here, which transfers via a bar through to the original AK's trigger. Now, because it's 3D printed plastic rubbing against 3D printed plastic, there is some friction there. In semi-auto, if you hold the trigger to the rear as you should, gun cycles, sometimes, sometimes it will stick to the rear, the trigger, if you hold it back too long, press it too hard, but it's fairly uncommon. Um, I would probably get a little bit of silicon oil in there, something like that, just to lubricate the, the trigger connection bar. Obviously one of the strangest things about this gun is that the pistol grip is at pretty much 45 degrees. That's a necessity, of course, to allow loading of magazines because if the pistol grip was straight here, you'd not be able to rock and lock the AK type magazines. Ergonomics wise, personally, I'm not gonna lie, guys, I, it's not great. You don't buy this thing for the ergonomics. The actual, the location of the trigger's fine, the handguard's all right, especially with the grip on there. Uh, but the, the angle of this pistol grip, you have to chicken wing it. You try and tuck this arm in and you're like bending your wrist at a really uncomfortable angle. The irony is if you drop to a kneeling or a prone position, when your arms are out anyway, it's actually more comfortable than a conventional rifle in some ways. But yeah, don't be expecting this to be the most perfectly ergonomic, super comfortable gun to use. If you want uniqueness, you want to be the only guy at a game with a certain gun. I mean, I can't think of anything better, but it does have its issues in terms of uh, how you hold it, how you grip it, etc. Now, you can actually, much to my disbelief, transition shoulders and still run the gun. Uh, Obviously, it wouldn't really work with a real gun. You'd possibly get the cocking handle in your teeth, a bit like the L85. But yes, you can actually transition your shoulders depending on your sling setup. Reloads are a little bit tricky, as you would expect. Obviously, bullpups are not the best for reloads as it is. It definitely takes a few practices, a couple of dozen dry runs of fitting that magazine, removing it again, just, and there we go quite often the valve knocker will hit. That depends whether the uh, action is cocked or not. The standard Russian optic rail is maintained on the side here. Unfortunately, the optic would be right here where your cheek's gonna go, so that's no use. You're gonna wanna make sure you have like an Ultimac style rail up here on the handguard. Uh, you're gonna need to mount a, an optic to this, something with quite a high rise, especially. First thing I noticed picking this gun up out of the box was I went to aim and you physically cannot get your eye down low enough to use the iron sights. You can't do it. You have to have a rail on here. If you want a sighting option and you don't just want to point shoot, you need to put something like an aim point on a riser. Uh, or this is just a replica EOTech, something like that. Just some serrations on the butt pad there. The selector is, it's not too bad to access in fairness. It's, it could be worse. It's not quick. You can't do it with your main firing hand. You have to either come back off fire control or use that reaction side hand to manipulate the safety and the selector there and your dust cover. Same thing with the cocking handle. It's like running an L85. But yeah, end of the day, folks, it is something that looks seriously unique. It's not the most comfortable thing to use, but it's different. It looks cool. It looks futuristic. I, I do enjoy the look of it, I have to say even though it's not something that's as practical as I'd usually go for. Since it is gas blowback, might as well put a few shots through it. I've got no BBs. Uh, you can set the WE AKs to not lock back, even when you've got no BBs in the magazine. So what you'll want to do is safety off, cock it first so that the valve strike is back. Insert the magazine. It is a little awkward. So we're on semi right now. Automatic. And it is it's just a very enjoyable, fun, 
different gun, folks. Uh, I'm going to finish out the video by sliding in some B-roll footage of the action just working in slow-mo, just because it's gas below back, might as well. So yeah, guys, uh, if you want this or a Bullpup Scar or a Bullpup G5, check out Pro Airsoft Supplies. They're a good bunch. Cool, unique, different piece of kit here. <laughs> Pretty interesting to look at. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. Uh, check out social media links down below. I'll see you next time.